Welcome back after the break. We'll uh, continue. Um, we will look. We were uh, looking at uh, verses uh, six and seven, and then we moved on to verses eight and nine. Okay. So before we went for the break, we said that um, you know, um, that in the last days. Addition to having men who have a form of godliness uh, without power and uh, these kind of men who sneak into people's homes, uh, they will also be men who will be involved uh, in spiritualism and the occult. Okay, they will be uh, involved in the occult and the uh, and um, to the enchantments. They will be connected to the uh, evil forces. Um, of the world, there be uh, they will be connected to the demonic uh, forces uh, of Satan, and hence they will do things through their uh, through the demonic forces and the demonic world. Okay, uh, but uh, Paul goes on to say that these kind of men will not progress uh, further; they will only have a limit. Okay, to what they can do, to where how they can proceed. Uh, just like the magicians, they were able to just do the uh, first three miracles and the fourth miracle almost, they were not able to do it uh, through their uh, enchantments, through their uh, evil powers. And so also we see that uh, uh, these kind of evil men who live in the last days, uh, they will be empowered to do certain things to the demonic forces, but they will have a certain limit. They will not be able to go beyond that limit. Um, and their foolishness will be uh, manifested. It will be opposed uh, against the. It will be opposed by the power of God, uh, and we, we see that the power of God will have much uh, more power. It show forth much more power and superiority. Uh, the power of God will be much more superior and more powerful uh, than these men who oppose the uh, truth. And Paul goes on to say that such men. Uh, they resist the truth, which means they oppose the truth, they fight the truth. Uh, they are men of corrupt minds, which means that they are evil, uh, they are sick in their minds, they are twisted in their thinkings. Uh, they, are dis they disapprove concerning their faith, which means their faith is not real, it's a false faith, it's worthless, it's a counterfeit. Uh, they will progress no further, which means they will not get too far in what they want to do, uh, they will not achieve much, and their foolishness will be exposed. Okay. Before we move on to the next uh, verses, uh, there are two things, important things that we can learn here. The first thing is, which I've already, which I've already mentioned, but just like to reiterate, that we must press in for more of the supernatural power of God and not back away from it. Um, given whatever will happen in the last days, okay? Uh, like uh, we saw that God did not tell Moses to stop doing the signs and wonders and to take up a different strategy uh, when the sorcerers and magicians of Egypt were able to perform some of uh, the miracles to their counterfeit uh, uh, the, uh, power, to the counterfeit miracles and to Satan's power, uh, but we see that God does not change. And uh, we also know that Paul wrote in First Timothy chapter four, verses one to three, uh, um, uh, that the Lord Jesus foretold in the last days that there will be increased measure of false and counterfeit teachers and workers of uh, Satan. Okay, so we see him writing again in about this. He's mentioned this in First Timothy chapter four, and. Uh, uh, God also mentions that in the last, Jesus also mentions the last days that there will be increased measure of false and counterfeit teachers, workers of Satan. So the very thing that the church of, uh, uh, of Jesus Christ has to do in these last days, we need to press in, asking God for more of his power, more of the Holy Spirit to be manifested and demonstrated in our lives. The second thing is we must stand firm in our faith, uh, demonstrating greater measures of God's power until the foolishness and the worthlessness of those who oppose the truth are uh, exposed. Okay. Uh, yes, in this last days, we will see that Satan will do 
uh, many uh, would have the ability to do counterfeit miracle signs and wonders, uh, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit, His power, um, you know, we can uh, put a stop to that because uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can manifest the greater power of God and, uh, you know, Satan and his forces and uh, the men who uh, do these counterfeit miracles will have a limit and they will be able to see uh, the greatness and the power uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, manifested in and through us through the gifts of the uh, Spirit, just like it happened in Egypt uh, when Moses confronted Pharaoh. Okay, so a church today and all of us as uh, believers, we need to come into a place uh, where we are. Uh, you know, uh, pressing in for more of the dualist power of God, um, pressing in for more intimacy uh, with God. It's only when we have intimate relationship with God, you know, we receive his power. And uh, when we receive his power, we need to step out and, um, you know, uh, flow in mighty signs, miracles, and wonders. We need to demonstrate the greater power and the greater glory of our Lord. Okay? So let's keep pressing in for more of the manifestation of God's power in our lives. Then in verses 10 and 11, uh, uh, Paul talks to Timothy or mentions Timothy about uh, uh, training by association. Okay, verses 10 and 11. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened uh, to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them, uh, out of them all, the Lord has delivered me. Okay? So Timothy had a privilege, uh, or had the privilege of working closely with the Apostle Paul for about 18 years. Uh, we, we know that Paul treated Timothy as the son in the faith, and Paul let Timothy to see him and various aspects of his life. Uh, Paul's life was very open. Um, everything that he did, his ministry, his way of life, his mannerism, uh, we see that uh, Timothy had an opportunity to see that, study it, know it, observe carefully. So Timothy carefully observed Paul. Uh, he had the opportunity to also listen to Paul's teachings uh, about the gospel, about the way of life. Uh, uh, to see his purpose, why uh, Paul is living, what God has called him to do, how he's doing it. And he was able to see Paul's love for God, his love for people, uh, his perseverance uh, in spite of all the hardships, in spite of all the persecutions, in spite of all the difficulties that he uh, faced. So Timothy had a very close relationship with Paul. He was able to see Paul's uh, life for 18 years. And he received a lot from Paul through his teachings, through his life, just observing him, uh, just living with him, just ministering along uh, with him. Okay, so there's a wonderful lesson that we can learn today. Uh, you know, this is how we raise uh, Timothy. So when we talk about uh, when we say this is how we raise Timothy, it means this is how we raise sons and daughters in the faith. This is how we mentor uh, people. Okay. Uh, so if you treat people like sons and daughters, you know, we will raise up sons and daughters. If you treat people as servants, then we will raise up uh, servants, okay? Uh, what do we mean by this? Now, if you discipline a servant or a maid who comes and works in our house, you know, they might get angry and uh, from the next day onwards, they will go to the next house and they will start working there. But if you discipline uh, sons and daughters, yes, they might be upset, uh, you know, for a number of days they might not talk or, uh, you know, even want to look at you. Uh, but, you know, we know that they will remain home. They will not leave home because it is their home, okay? Uh, they know they have a responsibility in that home. They know they belong there. It's their place. So they will not leave and go away like uh, servants. Uh, you know, servants work for a reward. But uh, sons and daughters work because they belong, they belong to the family, they belong to each other. You know, it's their house, it's their responsibility. They have to do 
uh, certain things and take on certain um, responsibilities. Um, servants receive um, a, a reward for the things that they have done, but sons and daughters receive an inheritance. Okay, and uh, so we see, you know, uh, like in a similar way, you know, if we raise up people uh, to be like servants for us in the church, then they will have this kind of servant attitude. When you discipline them, when they get upset with you, uh, you know, they will just leave and they will go to some other uh, church. Uh, or if we, uh, you know, they, they do something and uh, they are not appreciated or they are not acknowledged, they are not rewarded, then they can uh, get upset and they can leave and go uh, to some other church. But if we raise sons and daughters, you know, in the faith, um, you know, treat them like sons and daughters, um, give them that kind of uh, privilege and that standing, then we know that sons and daughters, even when we discipline them, you know, they might not, they will not leave the church and go. Or when they, uh, when they do something for the church, when they work hard, they will do it not just because they want to be rewarded or acknowledged or at a position uh, or get some credits um, or some perks, but they will do it because they belong to that church, their church. And uh, they will see uh, and do things for the, so that the church grows and uh, progresses. Okay. So this is how we are to raise up our sons and daughters in the faith uh, and not raise up servants. Uh, so apart from Timothy, Paul raised up many other sons and daughters in the faith. Uh, we have so many of them. One of them is uh, Titus, uh, you know, and others who he has, uh, like Aquila and Priscilla as well, he has uh, uh, taught them. And uh, all of these people, uh, we see that even after you know, Paul, Paul was um, martyred, we see that, uh, you know, uh, the work of the kingdom did not stop, but the work of the kingdom progressed uh, because of the, uh, you know, the kind of training, the kind of uh, mentorship that uh, Paul had given to so many young people who have now become leaders of various churches, who have gone back to their own places, they preached the gospel, they have started uh, churches and even we see that uh, you know the seven churches around uh, Ephesus, uh, which we read in, in the book of Revelation, were all started by people who were trained by uh, Paul in the in, uh, in the school which he had in the Terranus Hall. Okay, so we see that uh, the great impact that uh, the three years of ministry he did in um, Ephesus. Okay, and. Uh, so he's, we see that he raised up many sons and daughters in the faith and they all went out and they continued to do things for the advancement of the kingdom of God. So uh, even as we will rise up to be leaders or we have a Bible study group or we ministry to young people or children um, or mentoring a few people, we need to raise up sons and daughters and not servants. Okay. Any questions so far? Any doubts, any questions? Okay, uh, we move on to verse 12 and 13. Paul says, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Uh, so we see that in verse 12, you know, Paul says that no one is exempt from persecution. Paul himself suffered persecution greatly. And he says, we will all suffer persecution. Uh, you know, even in the last days, there will be more persecution. We will suffer, but we need to stand strong in our faith. And we can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, even as we uh, ask for more of it and tap into more of it. Okay? And in verse 13, he says, but evil men and imposters will grow uh, worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, so Paul is reiterating the fact of what will happen in the last days, and he is using the word imposters here, which is uh, which actually means wizards, and wizards are men or uh, women who cast spells uh, and who are involved in the occult, uh, you know, dark forces and the demonic forces. Uh, uh, they through the demonic forces they uh, you know cast spells. And, uh, and these men are energized by demonic powers, okay? 
Uh, so we will see an increase of people involved in the occult. Uh, they're tapping into the wrong source of power. Uh, and these men uh, we see will be deceived uh, themselves and also will deceive many. So in the last days, we will have many counterfeit miracles that are happening by many um, people uh, or wizards who are tapping in or they are energized by the demonic forces, the demonic powers. They will do many counterfeit miracles and uh, they are men who will deceive many through their uh, counterfeit miracles and signs and wonders and they themselves will be deceived. So we as uh, the church must grow stronger and stronger in the truth. We need to grow stronger in the holiness, uh, in purity, uh, in the power of God to counteract uh, all that is going to come up or is coming up in these last days. Every counterfeit miracle, signs, wonders, uh, false teachings, false doctrines, uh, we need to count, uh, you know, counter that uh, with uh, uh, you know, the truth in God's word. So we need to be stronger in the truth in God's word. Uh, personally, we need to uh, you know, uh, spend quality time with God uh, so that we are living lives of the holy and pure. And also we tap into more of the power of God uh, so that we can counteract uh, all the counterfeit miracles and signs and wonders that are happening. And then Paul goes on to tell Timothy to continue uh, in what he has learned. Verses 14 and 15 says, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation, to faith which is in Christ Jesus. So Paul is telling Timothy, continue in the truth uh, because you know from whom you have learned them. You know, uh, Timothy has learned the truth in God's word uh, from Paul. He's been taught of Paul. He's also learned from Paul's life, his ministry, the way he's uh, handling things in the ministry, the way he's doing things, the way he's living his life, uh, you know, according to the will of God. So he's learned from Paul. He's also learned from his grandmother and his mother, which uh, uh, you know, Paul mentions in First Timothy. Okay, so he says, you've already learned these truths uh, and you've been established in the truths, but you have to continue with them. You need to hold on to the truths. I'm sure all of us here, we are been uh, taught by our pastors, your parents have taught you, your mentors, maybe some of you have had mentors who have taught you, uh, you've learned to your Sunday school teachers, uh, you're also learning now at the, the Bible College, uh, so you know, you have learned a lot of things, but you need to continue the truth uh, and hold on to what you have learned. And the second thing he says, uh, the reason he gives to continue the truth is because he says, you know from where you have learned them. He says, you have learned this truth, uh, you know, just not by looking at people or hearing from them or observing people's lives or watching their mannerisms, the way they do uh, live their lives in the sight of God and man. But he says, you've learned it from the holy scriptures. Okay, the truth of uh, the word has been deposited in Timothy. It's there in him. And so he says, you know, hold on to this truth. Uh, do not deviate from this truth, truth. Do not go away from this truth. And test everything that you hear, every doctrine, every um, argument. Uh, you know, test it against the truth that is in God's word. Okay. Uh, two important lessons that we can learn here is, uh, you know, firstly, we need to have the men and women of credibility. Uh, like Paul says, you know, uh, you know, imitate, like he says in, in another letter, he says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Now, for him to write it, uh, you know, that powerful statement, he knows what he is writing. So, imitate me means just do exactly what I'm doing, copy me exactly, uh, he says, because I'm exactly copying uh, Christ. That means Paul has lived such a life. 
uh, you know, which is like an open book which people have seen, and uh, people have seen, um, you know, um, uh, in his way of life that he has been living according to the standards of God, the righteous standards of God, living in holiness and uh, uh, purity. And so he's saying, you know, uh, we need to be uh, men and women of credibility, okay? Uh, that means the way we live our lives uh, in secret when nobody's watching us, uh, the way we live our lives at home, the way we live our lives in the world, the way we live our lives in the church, all has to be the same uh, in, in pure righteousness and holiness, in utter righteousness and holiness and purity. Um, because when we live our lives in holiness and purity, uh, you know, our message, people will listen to it, our message will be credible, uh, because we are credible, uh, and if uh, people trust us, they can trust what we say. Okay? When, we, when they see our lives, um, then they will trust what we are saying, and they will imitate us, um, uh, you know, and it will lead them to also uh, live a life that is righteous and holy. So it's important for us to look into our own lives to see whether we are men and women of credibility, uh, you know, living a righteous and holy lives, and pure lives in the sight of God. The second important lesson that we can learn from here is uh, we need to establish people in the world, in the Holy Scripture. Okay? And then draw out truths and theology and revelations from God's Word, but we need to establish people in God's Word. Okay? Then Paul talks about in verse 16 and 17 that all scripture uh, is, uh, is required for equipping us for life and ministry. The entire scripture uh, equips us for life and ministry. Verses uh, 16 and 17, it says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, uh, for report, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, now Paul uh, is pointing to Timothy, uh, or uh, um, he points Timothy to the Holy Scripture, and uh, both the Old Testament Scripture, which they had in, uh, in Paul's time, and uh, they had access to read the Old Testament Scripture, uh, and now we understand this and we can also apply it to the New Testament, to the entire uh, scripture, Old and New Testament. But when Paul was pointing to Timothy, uh, when Paul was pointing Timothy to the Old, uh, sorry, when Paul was pointing Timothy to the Holy Scripture, that is the Old Testament scripture which they had in, in their time, uh, he's telling them, he's telling him that, you know, it has uh, been authored by men. Uh, who were uh, human, you know, who wrote their human language in their human circumstances, but it was revealed to them, inspired to them uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and uh, you know, the time that we are living now, we have access to both the Old and New Testament. So the entire scripture, you know, has been. Uh, uh, authored under the inspiration and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is written by human beings in their human understanding, in their human language, in their circumstances, in their culture, in their style, um, but by the inspiration and by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Okay, So all scripture is hence inspired by God, which means it's God breathed uh, holy men and uh, wrote it when they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 20 and uh, 21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So we see that uh, uh, here, how scripture comes to us. The scripture comes to us by men who are inspired by God and they wrote the scripture uh, uh, to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we see here that um, uh, Paul is saying that you know, all of scripture is profitable for doctrine, uh, 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So what does doctrine mean? Uh, doctrine means uh, teaching, it means learning. Uh, reproof means uh, to produce proof, evidence, or conviction. So scripture has sufficient uh, evidence and proof uh, to substantiate what it's uh, saying, the truth that it's being revealed there. Uh, it, uh, scripture, it also brings correction. Uh, it, that means it, just, you know, it straightens us up, it uh, rectifies us, it reforms us, it transforms us, it changes us. Uh, scripture also instructs us. That means it gives us education, training, nurture, uh, it corrects us, chastises us uh, uh, to make us more holy, to make us uh, more worthy in sight of God without any blemish, spot, or uh, uh, wrinkle, or uh, stain. It is that we can be presented before the Most High God without any blemish. It, uh, scripture also protects us, it makes us complete. Um, and it uh, equips us, it's, uh, it, it prepares us, it gets us well prepared, it gets us ready uh, to face any challenges, to face any problems, difficulties, uh, to face uh, uh, the times and seasons that we go through, uh, face temptations, uh, how to face sin and overcome it as well. So scripture really equips us, okay? So all these things are what uh, scripture does. Yes, scripture, uh, you know, it uh, gives us a revelation about who God is, what he does. Uh, it uh, reveals the nature of God to us. Uh, it reveals the works of God, the acts of God. Uh, it also gives us encouragement. It strengthens us in our daily walk. Um, it, um, it guides us in our path, but, uh, you know, and also all of these things that we just read, that it equips us, uh, completes us, instructs, corrects, reproves, and is... Uh, profitable for doctrine, which means it's useful for teaching and for learning as well. So we need to spend time and we need to give ourselves into studying uh, and meditating on scripture, not just studying and meditating on scripture, but also living by the truth in the holy scriptures. Okay, so that is the end of the chapter three. Anyone has any questions? Any doubts? Anything you want me to explain again? No? Okay, uh, the key takeaway uh, verse for the chapter three is um, uh, verses 14 and 15, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So the Word of God, you know, um, is able to make us wise for salvation uh, so that we can continue to work on our salvation in fear and trembling it also establishes us in the faith that is in Christ Jesus and strengthens us uh, apart from all the other things that we have looked at as well. Okay. okay, if there's no questions, then uh, we must begin the next chapter or would you like to read uh, chapter 4? So that next week we can just uh, start looking at chapter 4, okay, because we have some more time. Uh, can you take some time to read chapter 4, please? Okay, it has uh, the last chapter in uh, Second Timothy. It uh, has 22 verses, so each of you can read uh, about four verses each would be good. Are all of you okay? Is there too much of noise in the background? How many of you would like to read? You can uh, type in your names. I'll read it. Okay, Dave can read. Anyone else would like to read? I can read. Yeah, no, I can. Okay, Kiran, thank you. Prince as well? Okay. Okay, Siddharth as well. Okay, so all of you can read about five, five uh, verses. So Dave, Kiran, Prince, and Siddharth can read five verses each. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Okay, I'm sorry. 
I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at, at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for uh, themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Thank you, Dave. Anyone else would like to read 6 to 10? For I am already being poured out as drink offering, and the time of my departure is, is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give you to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for demons has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica, Sias, for Galatia, Titus, for Dalmatia. Thank you, Kiran. Can read 11 to 15. Yeah. Only loops, uh, only loop is with me. Get Mark and pray him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And that's yes, I have sent to Ephesians, being the Clock, clock that I left with the face at Taurus. When you come, uh -huh. Alexander the Clothes Smith did me work. You also must beware of him, for he is greatly resist our work. Thank you, Dave. Anyone else would like to Thank you. So that would be like to read uh, 16 to 22. Yeah, sure. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be full, fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greetings verse 19. Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onsphorus Erastus stayed in Corinth. And I left Trifus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Ebulus greets you, and so do Prudence, Linus, Galatia, and all the brothers. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Thank you. Um, okay, so you can just take a couple of minutes to just, uh, you know, kind of glance through these verses, and then maybe uh, a couple of you can just share, um, you know, if God maybe bless something in your heart. Some truth that um, you know has just popped up, or, uh, or something that you have read in the past, and you know God is reminding you again this morning as you as we read these verses. Okay, uh, you can share, or you can either unmute your mic and share, or you can type it in the chat section and you can share.
Okay, JB. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelism, fulfill your ministry. It's very touching and all. Okay, thank you, uh, Kiran. Let's be watchful, endure, and fulfill. Okay, three words here. Uh, even as we are serving God, even as we are ministering, um, even as we are uh, part of the church of God, we know we need to be watchful. Uh, there will be times of uh, persecutions and troubles and difficulties, but we have to endure it and we have to fulfill the calling on the purpose God has called us to. Okay? Yes, the powerful verse. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, if there are no more responses, then uh, we'll end class. We will uh, look at uh, chapter four um, next week. Okay, um, all the best for your the assessment. And if you have any uh, issues or any trouble, then you can just, uh, you know, post it in the street page and, uh, you know, we take care of it and I will get back to you. Okay. Okay, before we close, Prince says our fate must be till the end. Yes, sometimes in our life journey, tough times will come, but we must finish the race. Yes, amen. Thank you, Prince, for sharing. Okay, thank you everyone for uh, joining class today. Have uh, a blessed day and uh, I'll see you next week. Okay? Bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.